the original, okay, the original roots of the whammy, it was a case of um, sort of two bands, in a sense, almost combining, which would have been Living Proof and Madhouse. Living Proof used to be a band called the Hoodoos that came from, uh, from Calgary. Um, and they, they had a lead singer named Tim Rowland, who's still, still around on the scene. Anyway, and so uh, I guess the Hoodoos were sort of rivals of the Raving Mojos for a while. And they came to town. The Hoodoos used to put on wild shows. They were a really hot band. But then they split up with, with Tim and went on to become the Hamiltones for one night or two. And then, and I was in a band called Off Hawking then. And then they played their first gig as Living Proof. I think it was with Off Hawking at the Cameron, something like that. And you know, we were all, oh, we were like, wow, look at those, these guys are great, man. They're, they're almost as good as us. And, uh, and they were probably saying the same thing. So we, you know, we started playing the gigs together, and then Doff Hagen turned into Madhouse, and Living Proof started you know, getting following. And then we started doing this sort of house band thing down at the Quoc Tay. And that's where the action really heated up, right? <laughs> so we had a, Madhouse had a, about, I don't know, about two months of playing five nights a week at the Quoc Tay. And Living Proof would come down, and they'd play. And uh, you know, sometimes we'd play gigs where they'd headline. Sometimes you know, we'd headline. And we'd do sandwich gigs and things like that. We'd jam together. We talk about each other behind each other's backs constantly. Ah, those guys, you know. I mean, they stole that from us, you know. And uh, they'd see our gig and, and come around and and see some new song we'd done. And next week, we were sure that they'd stolen that idea, you know. And it went on like that for for a long time. But after after Lopez, the uh, bass player, quit, um, it was like the and our bass player in Madhouse quit. It was like the first thing I wanted to do was play with him because he was the best bass player around, you know best, you know, musician around. So it, uh, and I guess Lonnie, the, the drummer, he phones me up and says, well, you want to get together and play now that your bands have all broken up? Because I'm not doing anything. And, um, we, I said, sure. I broke a heart and made me L Cause I got a broken heart I said, oh, oh you child well, when we were a three-piece, we were a lot louder. When John came along in uh, about seven months ago, we were able to bring in more elements of, of, of piano because, you know, he plays the piano and saxophone to make it, you know, for the sort of a, a New Yorkier sound. Who <laughs> made you cough and holler? Sing the blues in Japanese. Yeah, Screaming Jay, the guy who came out and singing R&B with a bone in his nose. You're going to scream, woo, like an eagle. You're going to roar with my, like a mountain lion. When I get finished drinking, blow alligator wine. I got started with the whole Screaming Jay thing, and everyone kind of caught on. And, you know, he, he's such a great character, and he's fairly well on, you know, he's, he's fairly obscure. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I love the, the song, The Whammy. And I just thought, well, why not why call the band The Whammy? You know, it's a weird spelling, the whole bit. And, and we'll do the song, too. And then, uh, Somehow, just uh, this was before John joined the band, but he's listening to some Screaming Jay. I mean, we get a big laugh at it. We go play in the street and the Screaming oh, yeah. Jay songs. They great go stuff to play in the street, yeah. You know, it's just it's... Screaming Jay is just he's just such an ultimate character, you know. But he's generally he's really just like everybody else. But he he acts so wild. It's part of his act, you know, coming out of the coffin <laughs> and everything. We got into it and it worked because it, you know there's all the kind of voodoo impressions, you know, uh, of. Uh, I said, release me, you know. Uh, I ain't lying, woman, release me. You know, you can, she's putting a mojo spell on him, you know, and you can, you can really get into the whole thing of being controlled by uh, voodoo women, you know. So that's, that's sort of how the, the, the video got going. And we got some help from a video artist who, who was into that kind of stuff, you know. They never taught me. You know, we had a script, too. <laughs> can you believe that? <laughs> we had a script. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, there, there was, it was a card game where the stakes kept getting higher, right? And eventually, you know, as more, we didn't notice it, but we were having the whammy put on us slowly. You know, 
buy this mojo woman, you know? We're playing cards and we're, we're raising each other and our faces are starting to change because she's having an effect on us and, and she's doing things like, you know, sticking, she's putting the whammy on us basically and people are starting to feel pains on their body because that's where their, um, their cards are, uh, are, rather their dolls are being stuck. And, um, uh, you know, eventually I got the, the whammy right in the gut, you know? And uh, at the end, we want to kill each other too, you know? Because uh, there's, someone's putting an effect on us, right? You know, so it, there is a script. And it, it, was, it was tough in a way, but it was, oh, it was too much fun, you know? <laughs>